Chapter 7. The Holy Spirit. Q. Resist not the Holy Spirit. First Bible lesson, Acts chapter 7 verse 51. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Second Bible lesson, Acts chapter 5 verse 39. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. Golden text, Matthew chapter 26 verse 39. And he went a little further, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless not, as I will, but as thou wilt. Brethren, that is the revelation of our lesson this morning. I have already told you that the Holy Spirit is not new in the world. He had existed before the foundations of the world were laid. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. There is no person who can actually say anything about him or explain his emergence on earth. But the Holy Spirit is capable of narrating all the events and stories in the whole world, because everything emanates from him. Our major problem is the fact that the whole world continues to resist the will of the Most High. From the time of Adam, people have been fighting against the Holy Spirit. And because of this resistance, they are beset with all types of tribulations, poverty, sicknesses, wars and rumors of war, afflictions, pestilence, and other problems we have in the world. The world fights against God. If I may ask, who is this Holy Spirit? He is the Father, and who is this Father? He is the Almighty God. And who is God? He is the Christ. So, brethren, you realize that the entire world is constantly fighting against God. Inasmuch as you continue to pray to God to take away your problems or forbid one temptation or another, do you actually know where God wants you to be? And where do you want Him to push such a thing to? And sometimes you suggest to God that He should remove a particular thing from one place to another, and I ask, do you know whether God specifically kept it there knowing fully well that it was right to keep it there than to keep it somewhere else? If you move around the whole world you will find that all factions of the world constantly fight against God, and our forefathers did the same thing. When God has created you as a man, but you wish that you were a woman, have you not realized that you are fighting against God? You are resisting his will, and you are not resisting against the will of any man. And when God has created you a woman, you wish to become a man. Do you not think that you are fighting against the will of God, and not that of a human being? If God has created you a black person but you bleach yourself with Monica Smart to become fair complexioned, you are resisting the will of God. If God has created you a short person, but you look for certain devices to make you tall, can you not notice that you are fighting against God? If God has blessed you with the fruit of the womb, so that you put to bed as many children as possible but you go to find charms, contraceptives and drugs to protect yourself against pregnancy, you are fighting against the will of God. If God has created you a very productive type of man so that any time you are carnally intimate with a woman, she becomes pregnant, and for that reason you refuse to be intimate with any woman so, as not to make them produce more children, you are resisting the will of God. All those who commit abortion to fight against God. When your daughter is pregnant, and you cause her to commit abortion, by your own action, you are fighting against the will of God, the Creator, not the will of any man. Have you forgotten what happened to Judah and his children? Judah had two sons. The first son married a wife, but after some time he died, and the father asked the second son to marry the wife of his late brother in order to erase up issues into the brother's family. The second son did fight against God, because he decided that as long as he lived, he would not put her in the family way, even though he would be carnally intimate with her. As a result of this, and the atrocity of pouring out the blood, he died in his youthful age. Do you know, that by your actions, attitudes and behaviors daily you are fighting against God? Do not resist God's will. You make certain preparations, charms, concoction or talisman to protect you against anything evil, or to ward off any trouble from coming your way. Do you not know, that you are fighting against the will of God? God has given you two children, and on discovering that they are twins you try to do away with one so that your wife delivers only one child. Are you not fighting against God? God has not given you any child, but you pray to God that, if he is the real and true God he should give you a child, and if, because of your childlessness, you go to native doctors, soothsayers, necromancers and all sorts of persons in order to get children, you are fighting against God. 
Maybe you want them to conduct one operation or another to enable you to get a child which is entirely against the will of God. God has not yet given you a husband but you explore all avenues within your power to get hold of a man as your husband. Do you not think you are fighting against God? God has not given you book knowledge but you want to get it by force, and because of the quest for knowledge you go to places, do certain evil things, swallow pills and fight with all means and using various devices to be educated. With all these acts and behaviors you are fighting against God. Whosoever is not satisfied with the position, he is being kept by God fights against the will of God. Whosoever does not allow the will of God to manifest in him is fighting against him. If you suspect theft in your house and you pray to God that he should give you the ability to know the thief, you are fighting against God. Our Lord Jesus Christ did ask his disciples, Have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a demon? John chapter 6 verse 70. Even though he had discovered that one of his disciples was a devil, he did not expel him. God actually selected those twelve persons for our Lord Jesus Christ, and if he had expelled the one referred to as demon from the midst of his disciples, he would have resisted the will of his father. And since he himself is God, he cannot afford to fight against himself. All who come to God will not be cast out. If there is anyone amongst you who would disprove the fact that our Lord Jesus Christ is the Almighty God, he should come out and prove. He has said that all those given to him by his Father will follow him, and as many as will follow him, he will in no wise cast out. John chapter 6 verse 37. If it were that our Lord Jesus Christ had expelled Judas Iscariot, the devil, he would have resisted the will of God and the kingdom of God would have been brought to naught. Remember when our Lord Jesus Christ sojourned in a certain country, where he cast out demons from a man and the people in the community ordered that he should leave their country. Mark chapter 5 verse 17. He quietly left the place without any question or argument. If he were not God, he would have resisted the people, he would have argued with them, he would have told them, Do you not know that, since I am the Son of God the country belongs to me? If he had argued with them or refused the order, there would have ensued a fight and his action would have tantamounted to fighting against God. Do you remember, when he was about to be arrested and Peter took out his sword and cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest, our Lord Jesus Christ commanded Peter to put back the sword into its sheath, because any person who takes up the sword must surely die by it. He added that, if it were a matter of warfare, he would have prayed to his father, and he would send down twelve legions of angels to fight. Matthew chapter 26 verse 53. But if he should have taken that course of action, the will of the Father would not have been fulfilled. So brethren, you will notice that the world is constantly at war with God. How can the will of God be fulfilled if you constantly fight against his will? Every day you continue to request from God all sorts of things. Today you ask God to give you life, and tomorrow you would want to die off, and the next day you ask for wealth. Do you not realize that you are fighting against the will of God day in and day out? Who are you man to advise God? Remember, that Paul prayed three consecutive times that God should leave him to die, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 8 and 9. Do you not realize that by his action he was fighting against God? Elijah prayed to God, 1 Kings chapter 18 verses 1 to 46, to allow fire to rain down from heaven, and consume the Israelites, because they had killed all the prophets of God, destroyed their altars, and that he was the only person left, and that they were still seeking to kill him. By his action, words and prayers, he was fighting against God. It was only our Lord Jesus Christ who surrendered himself completely to the Almighty God, because he himself was God, and so could not resist his own will. Have you read somewhere or have you been told that our Lord Jesus Christ imputed sins unto anybody? If you impute sins on any person, it means that you are fighting against the will of God. In your effort to be inquisitive, you ask God why the other person is made tall, while you are short. Such inquisitiveness means you are fighting against God, and not against a human being. If you laugh at somebody, because the person has no child, you are laughing at the Holy Spirit, and not at that person. If you come across somebody who has got nothing to eat, and you laugh at him, it means you are laughing at God, and at the same time fighting against the Holy Spirit and not the person. If you hinder anybody from doing what he had intended to do, it is not the person that you have hindered but the Holy Spirit. 
you should allow the person to do what he wants to do, because, if what the person intends to do shall bring glory unto the Almighty God that thing shall stand, but if it shall not bring glory unto the Almighty God, it shall not stand. Most of us here would frown at a person, and disturb him, if we find him doing a particular thing we dislike, and would say such a person cannot do such a thing even upon your dead body. Do you not know, that you are fighting against God, and not against that person? When you say, and also use some means, that some other person may not have any children, or that you do not want the other person to live, do you know not that you are fighting against God? First Bible Lesson, Acts Chapter 7 Verse 51 Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Brethren, I want you to tell me the difference between what is created by God and what is not. After that, you will also prove to me what God had done, and what you feel he cannot do. When you have a simple headache, and you complain that it is not an ordinary headache, that there is something behind it and that something should be done about it. How do you know that it is not an ordinary headache? If somebody falls sick, and you allege that the sickness has something behind it, and for that reason an oracle should be consulted, how do you know that the sickness is brought about by somebody, and that an oracle should be consulted to find out? If somebody goes on a transfer, you begin to argue that the person has not stayed for a long time, and so should not be due for a transfer. How do you know and determine that the period the person has stayed is short? If somebody is wealthy and you suspect that there is something sinister behind his wealth, can you prove to me what is behind his wealth? So brethren, I see you, as people who constantly fight with the Holy Spirit, as your forefathers did. Your forefathers fought with the Holy Spirit, and you should realize that nobody had been and will be able to fight against God, the Holy Ghost, because he is the Almighty God who created heaven and earth. Be content with what you have. Why are you not satisfied with the position you have been kept by God? And why do you murmur against him? Who are you to ask God any questions? Who are you to order God to do anything for you at any time? Is that not an insult unto God? Brethren, that is the source of your difficulties and problems. It is not witchcraft, juju, concoctions and talisman to which you attribute your problems and difficulties. And I tell you that you encounter all these problems, because you constantly fight against the will of God. God has given something to somebody but you say that you cannot live to see that person enjoy that thing, and so a number of you conspire to rob him of his property. By plotting to remove that property from the owner, you also stand removed. You will then attribute the cause of your removal to other factors in the world. Can you not realize that you were fighting against God, and that has caused your removal? Even if a small child comes to the world with specific assignment, if the child begins to carry out the assignment you conspire jointly with others to fight against him, it is not this child that you are fighting but the will of God. All those involved in such ignoble acts will be removed. We should, therefore, be cautious of our actions, because anything that does not come from God can never stand, but that which comes from God shall stand, no matter your efforts to destroy it. If you have a child in your family who is a thief, and you continue to advise him to stop stealing but he does not obey, do not fight against him, do not quarrel. But only pray to God that this will be done. This is so, because, if you apply any force or measures to stop him from stealing you are fighting against God. Shall God not avenge his elects? We are advised by our Lord Jesus Christ not to resist an evildoer, Matthew chapter 5 verse 39, because there is some implication in the injunction. When you hear that God will revenge, Romans chapter 12 verse 19, in what way or form do you think his vengeance would take? Sometimes you are a very generous and benevolent person but all of a sudden somebody who has committed a crime somewhere comes to you for help, but you ignore him. Your refusal to help this person is not of your own making, but it is the will of God. And when people see this act they accuse you of being hard-hearted and not helping that person out of his trouble. By their abhorrences, they are fighting against God and not you. If you see a woman sent out of her matrimonial home by her husband despite her good and commendable character, and he decides to marry another woman, you should not worry, because the type of woman he will take up, will be such that will put him under her legs, control him and dictate terms for him. Although people will allege that the new woman has charmed him, do not say anything, because the man is the architect of his fate. 
despite the fact that people will say all sorts of evil things against the woman, and pray God to punish her for maltreating the man, you should not say anything, because you never can tell, if it is the vengeance of God visited on the man, for having maltreated the first wife. We should always keep mute and be satisfied with the position we find ourselves, lest happily we find ourselves fighting against God. Do you know, that, if an event in your life had not been waived, something more serious would have happened to you? You pray God to take away trouble, robbery, shame, disgrace, and pestilence. Do you know what would have been your position, if these things do not come your way? And, I tell you that of all things created by God, there is none which is evil, each of them has its specific assignments. If all of them are put together, they will produce a beneficial result. Everything you see day by day is being done by God. Prophets killed by the world. The scripture says unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised you up that I might show my power in you, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Exodus chapter 14 verse 4. This instruction is now given to you in this last generation because of your luck. Your forefathers had fought with the Holy Spirit, and failed and you have come up again to fight against God. Who is the prophet who was not killed by the world? And, so brethren, today again, are you not fighting against the Holy Spirit? Brethren, when you hear those words do not hesitate, because I am standing in the high heaven to proclaim them unto you. Your forefathers resisted against the will of the Almighty God and perished, and so, when you listen to these instructions you should cease from fighting against God. A servant is not greater than his Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ has said that any person who blasphemes against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anybody who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven in this generation and in the generation to come. Matthew chapter 12 verse 32 the trouble with the whole world, including those of us here, is that we constantly fight against the Holy Spirit. If you see a person who is rich, you will claim that the person is your age group, and if you do not possess as much wealth as he has, you would want to die out of this world. Do you not realize that when you behave in this way you are fighting against God and not any person? If somebody is worshipping a juju or God, allow the person to continue in his way, but be satisfied with the position God has kept you. When you say that people call you Beelzebub, demon and other names, and because of that you pray God to punish them and pronounce woe unto them, how do you know that you are not fighting against the will of God? It has been said by our Lord Jesus Christ that, if the world hates you, you know that it hated him before. John chapter 15 verse 18 if you were of the world, the world would have loved its own, but because you are not of the world, I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Remember the word that I said unto you that a servant is not greater than his Lord. Matthew chapter 10 verse 24. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep your own also. So, brethren, if you observe these things being done to you, do not quarrel with or curse any person, lest happily you find yourself fighting against God. We shall now have our second lesson read. Second Bible lesson, Acts chapter 5 verse 39. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. Brethren, have you heard that? Anything that comes from the Almighty God can never be destroyed by any person. We should allow every person to his own way, lest we find ourselves fighting against God. To avoid fighting against God, let us surrender ourselves entirely unto him. Avoid asking God to take away illness, to give you health, to give you anything. You have no right to request anything from God. He has everything, life and wealth, but you should keep quiet and allow him to fulfill his will. When you ask God to give you money, children and wealth, do you know the usefulness of any of these things? Why do you not keep quiet and allow God to do his will? Right now you have employed your lusts and desires to acquire children and money. These are the cause of your problem. You have got no peace of mind because you are fighting against God. If you allowed God to use you to do what he likes you would have no problem. Anything we possess that does not come from God is counterfeit and does not yield any useful result. And anything which does not come from him cannot stand. All your lusts and desires which make you fight against God do not bring any good result unto you. You are warned not to trouble yourself about tomorrow, because each day has its trouble, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Matthew chapter 6 verse 34, it is said, Life, 
wealth, strength and prosperity belong to him. Why then do you worry yourselves? If all those things belong to God they also belong to you. Whatsoever anybody does that does not come from the Almighty God cannot stand. But, if anything done by any person was being directed by God, no sin can be found in it, and no one can annul it. Although you have failed, you are fighting against God. You should realize the fact that what brings sickness, poverty, death and tribulations is the fact that we are constantly fighting against God. Sometimes we wrongly attribute those ills to some other things. How can God's will be fulfilled, if you resist it? If God does not give you anything, do not request for it, because, if you ask, you are fighting against Him. And if God gives you anything, do not reject it, because, if you do, you are fighting against God. An adage says, a messenger does not use parables when delivering a message. How can God's will be made manifest, if you constantly resist and fight against Him? Whatever we are forbidden to do by God is what we constantly like to do. God commanded, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Exodus chapter 20 verse 3. But, right now you keep and maintain many other gods, God of the leaves, amulet, talisman, and all preparations of concoctions and charms. With all these, can't you observe that you are fighting against God? God has commanded that you should not hate any human being, but the first thing you did is to express that you hate a particular person, and would not even want to see the person, and that you are annoyed immediately you see him. It is conclusive that what we like is what God hates, and what God likes is hated by us. And so, you will observe that man is always opposed to, and fighting against, God. Our Lord Jesus Christ has told us that he and the Father are one. John chapter 10 verse 30. He is in the Father and the Father is in him. John chapter 10 verse 38. His own thoughts, statements and conduct were in line with those of the Father. There was no difference between the Father and Christ. You will find that in the life and teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ, from the beginning to the end, there was no inconsistency in him. What was liked by our Lord Jesus Christ was also liked and cherished by his Father. Whatsoever happened to our Lord Jesus Christ, were those which were written about him. If he had resisted any of those things, he would have rebelled or fought against the will of God. If he had not surrendered himself completely unto God, it means the will of God would not have been fulfilled on earth. It was written that the shepherd shall be struck and the sheep shall scatter. Matthew chapter 26 verse 31, Mark chapter 14 verse 27. Many other things were written about him that he would be sold for thirty pieces of silver, Matthew chapter 27 verse 9, his garments shall be shared, John chapter 19 verse 23, temptations shall come his way, and the rest of the revelations prove to us that he was the Christ. And so, if it was written about you that you shall be sick, poor and shall encounter many difficulties and, if you do not allow these revelations to come to fulfillment you are fighting against the will of God. There is an adage which goes thus the frowning of a billy goat does not prevent it from being sold for slaughter. Therefore, if you continue to resist the will of God, whether you like to hide under the stones, forest, sky, abyss or wherever you like, you will find out that one day, you will be crushed. Why do you behave, as if you are very knowledgeable and intelligent? I tell you that your knowledge is very big. To disobey is to resist the will of God. When God was in the process of creating human beings, were you there to witness it? When he created heaven and earth and the things therein, were you there to witness the creation? And have you been told that anybody was there to witness it? When he created man and bestowed unto man his glory, were you there? Or was there any person who advised him on what course of action to take? Since that day Adam and Eve fell down the path of rectitude have you not seen the position of the world? They were instructed to eat of all the fruits in the Garden of Eden, except one, and any day they would eat of that forbidden fruit, they would die. Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. By eating that forbidden fruit, they were fighting against God, and so God in turn vented his wrath on them. I have to emphasize the fact that anything that does not come from God cannot stand, but whatsoever comes from him stands forever. We should be careful and mindful of ourselves, lest we find ourselves fighting against God. Every problem that comes to you has its own solution, there is therefore, no need, for you to bother about anything. I want to show you now, how you will stop fighting against the will of God, so that you may live in peace and comfort. Golden Text, Matthew Chapter 26 Verse 39
and he went a little further, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless not, as I will, but as thou wilt. Always allow the will of God to be manifested in you. Brethren, that is the only way of our salvation. If our Lord Jesus Christ did not make the statement read out to you but commanded God to take away death from him, although it would have been possible for the Father to do that, he would have lived till today. On the other hand, God would not have set death aside, because Christ would have died still but would have scored zero for resisting the will of God. As it was being read out to you, Christ only prayed to the Father that, if it were possible he should let the cup pass away from him, not according to his will but according to the will of God, because he did not wish to fight against the will of God. You, who drive away somebody from your house without asking God's consent, do you not know, that you are fighting against the will of God? You, who act by your own promptings to decide not to use your wealth, why can you not allow God to direct you? Why do you take it upon yourself to make a decision? Do you know, that nobody has any authority to do anything, but that God has the absolute authority to do everything? Anything you do out of your own volition means, that you are insolent, and you have to suffer for it. If you have a wife, husband, children, or anything whatsoever you want to do with them, and any line of action you want to take for and against them should be placed before the Almighty God that this will alone be done. Whatever happens thereafter is the will of God and you have to knock your head on the ground and thank him. Our Lord Jesus Christ was aware of what was happening all around him, and that was why he prayed that, if it were the will of the Father the cup should be taken away from him and that it should be, as the Father wishes and not as he, Christ, wishes, because he actually wanted the will of the Father to be fulfilled so, as not to fight against the will of the Father. And so, as human beings, if we do not go the same line, as our Lord Jesus Christ we shall find ourselves fighting against God. Sometimes it may please God to send thieves to rob you so that your life could be spared. But, if you fight with the robbers and do everything possible to refuse them entrance into your house you are fighting against the will of God, and thus scoring a zero. At times you take a decision that you are no longer going to be kind and benevolent to any person in order to conserve your wealth for yourself. Do you not know that by this attitude you are fighting against the will of God, and so you have to suffer? The Bible clearly states that, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain who built it, and except the Lord keeps the city, the watchman whacketh but in vain. Psalms chapter 127 verse 1. We should therefore, surrender ourselves completely to God, and allow His will alone to be done in us. If anything happens to you, place it before the Almighty God, and ask, that His will alone be done. Let Him decide what to do, and whatever happens go your way and do not worry yourself about it. Do not allow anything to bother, confuse or trouble you, allow the will of God alone to be manifested. Do not prejudge issues until the Lord comes. If our Lord Jesus Christ had prejudged any issues, he would have thought against God. Brethren, I have no intention to be tedious unto you. One stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. He that hath an ear, let him hear. The Lord bless his words. Amen. Thank you Father, 